Hi everyone, welcome to another JS Psych tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about functions in JS Psych and when functions are called. And this is actually a really critical piece of understanding uh, to, to get how JS Psych operates and, and why, um, why it works the way it does. So I think if you can understand this one piece of information about sort of when functions are called, it makes a lot of the other features of JS Psych start to make a lot of sense um, in, in hindsight. So in order to, to demo this, I've created a very simple experiment. Um, this experiment is um, kind of like a, a mock lexical decision experiment where you show people a string of characters and ask them if it's a word or not. Um, so just to, to sort of walk through it here, um, I've, I've got the HTML button response plugin loaded. I'm creating a timeline. There's a, a single trial here, and there are two buttons that get created, one button labeled word and another for non-word. So the idea would be you would click uh, whether the, the string is a word or non-word. And then I have a function here uh, called generate random stimulus. And this function is defined at the bottom of my file. So um, in JavaScript, in case you're unaware, uh, you, as long as you define a function with this, this function keyword, um, as the first thing, and then you say generate random stimulus or whatever your function name is. Um, it doesn't matter where in your file you put this. This function is accessible um, to any any uh, place in the file, even if it comes at the very bottom. Um, there's also another way to declare a function, just to um, sort of show this quick. So you could also declare a variable. So you could say generate random stimulus equals function like this. This would be another way of declaring the same exact function. Um, the difference is that now the order does matter. Because you're declaring this using the, the variable syntax, it's only available after this point in the script. Um, functionally, it does the same thing, but uh, it, it does the order does matter here. So I'm just going to go back to the way I had it before. OK, so um, what is this function doing? Uh, it's Pretty straightforward. It's I've created an array that has all the letters of the English alphabet. Um, I'm using the sample without or sample with replacement method um, on that array to get three items from the array. So I'm just getting a three-letter word or non-word at random, um, and then this join method takes that array and takes the three elements and merges it into a string um, with nothing in between them. That's why there's this sort of uh, empty string here as the uh, join joiner. If you put a space here, then it would be like, say the letters I got were C-A-T, it would be C space A space T, but now it'll just be C-A-T. Okay, um, and then uh, I've got this console log just so we can see when this function is called. That's going to be useful in a minute. And then we just return the word. So up here back in our trial method, we have the stimulus parameter we're generating a random stimulus and then that becomes the the parameter here so we're generating a random word uh, then what i'm doing is i'm adding three copies of the trial to the timeline so we'll get three trials um, i'm calling just another sort of illustration so this is the console.log it's saying that i'm about to call jspsych.init and then the experiment will begin and then i call dot init so that's the whole file there's nothing else um, so what happens here so let me switch over into the browser. I'm going to refresh the page. And all right, so our random word for trial one is BCA. So we'll just say not a word. Same thing for trial two, BCA again, not a word. Same thing for trial three, not a word. So hopefully um, it's clear that it's not just a random fluke that we happen to get the same word three times in a row, that there's something in this code that means that the, the stimulus that we're getting is the exact same. And um, the reason is that this function here is, is called when we create this variable. So every time you're setting up an experiment in JS Psych, um, all of the code that's running, that's, that's running um, like when the page loads. So this runs when the page loads, then this runs when the page loads. All of this is running when the page loads. And then when you call this init method, um, that kicks off a whole series or chain of uh, events inside JS Psych, but, but all of your stuff that's constructing the trial, that's already run. Um, so when we call timeline.push trial and we've got this generate random stimulus function, this function only ran one time. Um, it ran when we created this trial object here. So the first time we created this variable, 
it ran generate random stimulus, got BCA as the random stimulus and put that in as the parameter. And then we just added that parameter three times. We copied it on three times. So uh, I'm gonna go back one more time and refresh. So we get another weird non-word. I'm gonna open up the um, console here so we can just see um, that generate random stimulus is called. Um, that's the first thing that happens and we get QDQ as the three letter string. And then um, jspsych.init is called. Okay, so that's the order of events here. Um, okay, so one of the things that jspsych lets you do is it lets you pass a function to a parameter. And it almost looks like we're doing that here. It almost looks like we're passing a function as a parameter, but we're not. We're only passing the value of this function. This function gets evaluated and then it goes into the parameter. But instead, if we take away these parentheses and we pass the name of the function, now we're actually passing the function itself as the parameter. And that, um, that changes how JS Psych uses it. So let me go back to the browser again. I'm gonna refresh. Okay, so we get GUC as our first word. Um, non-word. Now we get a different word here, non-word. And then we get a different word again, non-word. Okay. And what happened in the in the log? Well, now jspsych init was called, so the experiment was about to begin. And then at each trial, the generate random stimulus method is called. Just one more time, you can keep an eye over here. See the init method is called first then generate random stimulus has been called but notice that the other two calls haven't happened yet because we haven't made it to that trial so non-word non-word uh, non-word okay so when you pass a function as a as the parameter um, js psych does not evaluate that function until the trial is about to start and this is what lets you set up all kinds of dynamic interaction in your experiment it lets you do things like um, update parameters based on what's happened before. Because if you pass a function in, that function can look up things that have happened in the experiment so far. You can access the data for JSIC, you can use that um, to change the parameter values that you're passing in, uh, and then you can uh, generate new um, sort of dynamic parameter values that are responsive to what the subject has done in the experiment. Um, it also lets you do things like this where, um, you know, you can sort of easily create a single trial that has a, a randomly generated value. And if you, as long as you don't call that when you're setting up the experiment like this, you, you pass that in instead, um, then you'll get the, the behavior that you're expecting. Um, so this distinction between like what a function allows you to do and when functions are called, I think is, is really important for understanding um, a lot of what's going on in the code. One thing that you'll see in JS Psych sometimes too, especially in some of the documentation code or in um, other tutorials that we've recorded. Uh, sometimes you'll see something that looks like this. So you'll see um, the word function and then sort of the function defined right here. And then this is called an anonymous function. It's an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. There's no, there's no generate random stimulus name here, but you can just pass in um, a function itself. Uh, and, and this can be useful to, to sort of streamline space. You don't need to sort of define everything else. And just to, to be clear, I'm just going to copy my code from the generate random stimulus. I'll paste it here. Uh, and so now I've just taken that code and I've just repeated it here. And we should get exactly the same behavior that we were getting before when we were um, when we passed the name of the function because we're passing a, an anonymous function here. So again, non-word, non-word, non-word. Sometimes you do get words, I swear. Okay, um, so hopefully that uh, is clarifying in terms of how a, a timeline is constructed and when functions are invoked. Um, and if you can keep this in mind, um, it really helps you think about how to, how to put together uh, JS Psych experiments and use functions to get sort of unlock the full power of what you can do with the, with the library. Okay, take care.